strong enough to Attica. Oh, it's very weak. It's very well edible. Once I finish this, let me tell you all about it. Okay, so I just got this guy on the kitchen table. All right, and um, so it's called sciatica, or commonly known sciatica, because of the blue flower, all right, which is cyan or cobalt blue, whatever you want to call it. And um, that is quite important. That's one of the major identifying features of this plant. And um, so, take you through the plant, just roughly. So it's a kind of prostate uh, herb, all right. Um, so we have, you know, a long stem and you know nodes and we have a kind of lancelate to ovate type leaf okay and then we have the distinctive blue flower and uh, it will sprout roots of the nodes all right and it will just uh, sprawl along like that quite happily okay and it's kind of a herbaceous pant so you'll see quite a lot of it in the summertime and in the spring and then when it comes to autumn it will start to die back a little bit and it'll go back to the uh, back to the root and re-emerge okay uh, in the summertime or in the spring um, so you can use the leaf okay and you can also eat the flowers okay if you're in a trendy restaurant you might have uh, those little flowers in your salad and um, taste wise it's not much to write home about it's all right do you know what i mean <laughs> it's uh it's it's not amazingly uh, flavorsome but of course it's probably and i say the word probably uh, quite carefully, high vitamin C because this is how it got its name, the rather unfortunate name of scurvy weed. All right, so first thing to say, it's not a weed. This plant is an Australian native. It's meant to be here, so it's really to call it a weed is really the wrong thing. Um, but obviously, the the term scurvy weed relates to really in the early days of European colonization. Um, you know, the the guys that were here and the, the women that were here. You know, they had an appalling diet and they were very short on fresh fruit and vegetables so consequently scurvy was a big problem for them okay which is deficiency in vitamin C or ascorbic acid okay um, so they just went out into the local scrub they, they gathered this and they just ate it cooked or raw to relieve the symptoms or prevent the symptoms of scurvy all right and that is how it's got its common name of scurvy weed um, I haven't found much recorded data on Aboriginal use, okay, in fact, absolutely no data uh, on Aboriginal use of this plant. Now, that is not to say that Indigenous people here did not use this plant. I think they almost certainly did, all right, they were here for, you know, over 30,000 years. So every every plant and, you know, every herb, that, you know, that was growing, they would have found a use for it. If there was some kind of... Uh, way that you could potentially use it, use it as an edible or you know medicinally you know they would have found out about it and uh, some members of the Comalina family not this one uh, but in China are used in Chinese medicine as a kind of anti-fungicide uh, type thing there's uh, uh, another uh, species called Comalina diffusa okay and there's a few Comalinas throughout the world. There's something like 40 uh, different Comalinas throughout the world. There's, there's some in America that are uh, classed as weeds and some as natives. Um, there's ones in the Himalayas and South Africa. They're all over the world. All right, but the Comalina sciatica is the one that we have on the east coast of Australia. And you normally find this is quite prevalent in New South Wales. And then getting into the, the north of Queensland, and then uh, you still find it up to the north and northern territories but it gets a little uh, more sporadic okay so you're probably going to find this run about anywhere the eastern side of um, you know uh, Australia you're likely to find this plant all the way up to the northern territories uh, but New South Wales is certainly the place where it seems to be more prevalent um, so you can eat the leaf or you can eat the flower I don't really bother with the stem uh, if you really are desperate and need vitamin C and are getting scurvy, probably the best way to do it would just to be eat it raw because cooking may uh, deplete some of the vitam vitamin content of the plant. Okay, can't really do a film about uh, the, the scurvy weed without talking about this plant. So this is Tradescantia fluminescens. 
all right, which uh, is not a native to Australia. This is an introduced plant, okay. So this is better known as Wandering Jew, okay, which is um, a little bit of an unfortunate name. It is quite anti-Semitic, all right. Um, that is what it's been known for for a long time. So most people uh, watching this video who live in Australia would be familiar with this plant and know it as Wandering Jew. Um, so very very similar plant okay all right if we compare the two all right very hard to uh, pick them apart okay unless you know what to look for all right 95% the same and um, that's an issue because this is potentially uh, a toxic or poisonous plant that can potentially make you sick all right it is not an edible all right um, child care centers and nurseries are required by the council by law to remove this from their grounds okay um, because there have been issues in the past with children having reactions to this plant okay so again not a native to Australia it's introduced from South America and it was introduced as a cr uh, ground cover plant all right so it has the same habit habitat uh, as the native wandering dew so it kind of it's a herb that meanders along the ground and produces a, a you know a very sort of rich ground cover okay it's a little bit more aggressive uh, than the wandering dew okay so that's how it was used introduced as a ground cover you know years and years years ago and um, became a weed is generally seen as a weed in backyards now and also a really big problem in the bush okay um, it is quite a hard plant to get rid of because it has that herbaceous uh, habit again and you can hit it with a herbicide, kill all the foliage but there will still be a bit of the root underneath in the earth and next year it will come up. So there's teams of uh, bush regenerators and they have to take it out by hand, okay? You know, they can't use herbicides or anything like that. So it's quite um, a difficult thing to get rid of if you've got it in your garden and it's really difficult to get rid of if it gets into the bush okay um so the main issue with this guy and why i'm going to talk about this is because um of identification right so this is potentially going to make you sick all right and as you know something we want to try and get rid of it's a noxious weed all right this is an australian native okay and if you're interested in wild edibles okay this is you know uh, a fairly good plant to find okay very very similar okay so that's a bit of a problem so the main identifying feature is the flower okay so with scurvy weed all right or the sciatica uh, we're gonna have a blue flower okay yeah with the wandering dew and at the moment this one is not in flower I couldn't find one in flower because it's a little bit off season uh, so I'm just going to use a little chili flower as a prop we would have a white flower okay all right now again this is not the flower off the plant but this is just to give you an idea of what it would look like so wandering dew would have a white flower okay uh, and the scurvy weed will have a blue flower and that's how you would identify it and you it can be a little bit hard um, you have to be very careful because sometimes they'll even grow intermingled all right so you always have to be on your toes uh, with this from um, if you're looking at it from an edible point of view and also I would recommend that you do your own research and consult a local expert just don't rely on what I say uh, you know consult a local expert somebody who really knows what they're doing before you approach any kind of wild edibles all right that's a bit of a disclaimer there okay um, so now so if we take away these flowers all right and we just have the two plants side by side you can see all right it starts to get a little bit hard to tell them apart all right and uh, there is a slight difference in the shape of the leaf all right um, the wandering dew tends to be a little bit more robust and a little bit darker green usually but there'll be a lot of natural variation with that and you might be uh, find that different in your area um, but one of the ways I've found that you can tell the difference is with the scurvy weed 
if we look up close, and it's going to be a little bit hard to photograph, but this little part of the, the plant here where the, the uh, leaf is coming out, all right, this little part near the node is called the sheaf, all right. And if we look at this little sheaf with the scurvy weed, it will be hairy. But with the wandering dew, it tends not to be hairy. So they can be very, very difficult to tell apart without a flower. And you have to be really, really on your toes. So um, I would have extreme caution when you, um, uh, if you are a forager and you're looking for that plant. But there's the, um, you know, really great Australian wild edible, Commelina sciatica or scurvy weed. Um, you know, you can cook it or you can have it raw. One of my favorites.